Yeah, the soldier came with peace. They came from the helicopter and they came and they came to the ship to stop the ship. But uh, when they get down to the ship, a lot of people, a lot of uh, Turkish men, and uh, um, come and attack them. And we have to do it to. We have to use force. Everything is against the Jews. We have the right to defend ourselves. If Turkey sends a ship full of uh, Muslim uh, terrorists, it means that we have to stop them. All the international, uh, international uh, media, media. media try to present us as killers and, and bad people. But all we try to do is to do peace, and we want the peace in the middle. Well, I'm joined now from Ramallah by Huweda Araf from the Free Gaza Movement. She was in one of the six ships, the Challenger, which was raided by the Israelis. Huweda, first, you could see uh, what was going on on the big Turkish ship. And therefore, from the reports also on our program tonight, people were armed and ready with sticks to get the commandos as soon as they arrived in the boat. Is that the case? Um... I don't know. I can't say that the people were armed and ready. We had discussed a lot about using just our bodies to repel any invasion by the Israelis. At the same time, we had repeatedly called on the Israelis not to attack our ships, not to use violence. They did radio us. We identified ourselves. We told them that we are unarmed civilians. We have parliamentarians with us. We have reporters with us, doctors, journalists, lawyers. And we are carrying humanitarian aid headed for the Gaza Strip. There is no reason to use force against us. Uh, they chose, unfortunately, to, to use violence. I was on the Challenger 1, which is an American flagged ship. It was the smallest ship of the, uh, of the ships, the vessels that were on the flotilla. But we were traveling almost side by side with the Mavi Marmara, the Turkish ship, and so I could see the beginnings of the attack on that ship. I could uh, see Israeli naval forces when they approached by sea and the concussion grenades that they threw in and also some firing. I don't know what it was in terms of what kind of bullets they were firing, but Israeli commandos were definitely firing. And then the captain put, uh, took our ship full steam ahead because we were trying to, before we were overtaken, to get some news out to the international community. Unfortunately, all of our satellite systems were jammed, and after about 15 minutes of trying to outrun the uh, Israeli naval forces, they surrounded our ship. They threw concussion grenades on our boat, uh, used tasers, and then boarded mast and with them, w with their weapons, with their rifles actually cocked and ready, and they also had dogs with them. We tried to get them off just with our bodies and to prevent them from overtaking the ship. They beat many of us. A uh, volunteer ended up with a bloody face. My head but smashed against just, the, uh, the deck of the boat. I just want to ask you um, uh, one other question about this. Now, what our reporter Tim Hugh was saying was that he, uh, certainly in terms of the biggest ship, this was not primarily from the biggest ship's point of view about aid. It was about 600 or more so activists protesting about the blockade. Is that the case? Um, we were carrying 10,000 tons of different forms of, of aid needed in the Gaza Strip, from reconstruction supplies to school supplies and medical equipment. And while we fully intended our goal was to reach Gaza with this aid, our goal is not to perpetuate this um, cycle of humanitarian aid, because that's exactly what Israel's blockade is doing. It is squeezing the people of Gaza, letting a certain small amount of aid in that doesn't meet the needs of the people and is strictly limited to a few uh, kinds of items. So thousands of items are denied entry under the pretext of security, but actually they have nothing to do with security. Like, why won't Israel allow in baby formula or paper, books, oxygen, anesthetics? These are the kinds of things that we were carrying on our ships. Thank we wanted so to deliver them because they are much needed in Gaza, but also we need to challenge the policy that leaves Gaza in need of humanitarian aid. Thank you for joining me tonight.
what it has did. They killed six million of us. And it reminds us of these days. It reminds you of the Holocaust. This yeah. It reminds us of the Holocaust. No matter what we do, everything is against us. Everybody. And you know we're right. You know we're right. knows very well that what happened here was uh, totally justified by Israel because a, a group of people who wanted to uh, provo provoke a fight came here under the disguise of, uh, of peacekeepers coming to, to Gaza to break a siege that doesn't exist, to break a siege that doesn't exist. Sometimes the only way out of that situation is through violence. Particularly if the one that is violating your rights and taking away your freedom is ruthless and uses systematic methods of violence to oppress you, like torture. Amnesty International has regularly documented serious human rights violations by Israeli military forces in the occupied territories, including unlawful killings, torture and ill treatment of prisoners, wanton destruction of homes with residents still inside, the blocking of ambulances, denial of humanitarian assistance, and the use of Palestinian civilians as human shields and has gone so far as to label them war crimes. 60 to 70 years ago, everyone wanted us dead. They killed six million of us. And it reminds us of these days. It reminds you of the Holocaust. This. Yeah. It reminds us of the Holocaust. No matter what we do, everything is against us. Everybody. And you know we're right. I'm a witness. I know the Arabs are very good. No problem till the Zionist movement starts. Like, like, like. 